The down dog is an awesome exercise to stretch the ankles, hips, shoulders, and upper back. It also activates your core and warms up those shoulders. Now I want you to inhale through the nose going back. Really work to get the heels flat to stretch the ankles and push away with the hands to maximize movement of the upper back with thoracic spine. <sighs> Exhale forward through the mouth. Make it harder by adding a push up. Inhale down. <sighs> Exhale up. <sighs> if being in a push up position bothers your wrists, you can actually elevate the heel of the hand on slant boards. If you want to make this super challenging from a mobility standpoint and increase the stretch on the wrists, turn them the other way, elevate the fingers, and now you've got an advanced wrist mobility exercise and you've also got extended range of motion on the push-up for more chesticles. got to love the down dog. This is actually the cobra, but the down dog or yoga push-up, right? We get full mobility benefits, warms us up for the push-up. Now, how do we make it harder? One option is to go one leg at a time, which is going to increase the core stability challenge. Also makes this quad and glute have to work harder to stabilize. You got to focus on this toe. You got to drive it down underground, dig the toes into the earth, okay? I'm going to shift back, inhale through the nose into the belly. I'm going to drive that Heel up to the sky, try to get full hip extension there, maximize the stretch in the ankle, calf, and hamstring, okay? Coming forward on an exhale, bring that knee forward, activate those hip flexors, and again, don't get here. Keep the, the upper back rounded. How to make it harder? Watch this. Scat push up. All right, now, that's tough. So. Don't worry about the scat push-up component, just do the knee and only. If you have wrist issues, elevate the heel of the hand. If you want to increase the wrist stretch, elevate those fingers. The one arm down dog is an advanced abs and hip mobility exercise. What we want to really focus on doing is get a nice wide base of support Dig your toes into the ground and keep your quads as active as you can. From there, I'm gonna inhale back to the nose into the belly, trying to flatten the heels to the floor and see where I am right now. Now watch what happens when I use my lower traps to pull my shoulder blades down and kind of push away. See that? That's what I'm looking for there. Get a good stretch, you can pause for one or two seconds so you can do a little bit of a Uncle Baby hip wiggle. Exhale back. Now, what I'd like you to do to get the most out of this is do a scat push up. Keep the arms straight. Inhale down, exhale up. Serratus anterior, muscles alongside the ribs and shoulders ability to support. You wanna be able to do a single arm push-up, I know you do, advanced trainees, okay? This is where it starts, because if this is not strong and moving properly, you'll end up moving too much for the elbow and you're gonna get shoulder pain. Now, here's some modifications. One, I can use a push-up handle, a parallel, or a dumbbell, I can go with a neutral grip. This is easier on my wrist, it also puts my shoulder in neutral position and gives me a little bit of elevation for better leverage. So, especially if you're calves, ankles, and hips are tight. This will be much more accessible for you. All right. Now I can also play with slant boards. Elevating the heel of the hand will allow me to, if I have wrist mobility issues, be able to do the exercise better and without wrist pain. But if I want to make it an advanced movement, I can elevate the wrist and having two slant boards is nice because I can combine them. And now this is like basically uh, gives you mutant like wrist mobility. All right. all while stabilizing the spine. So, so many benefits, mobility, stability, and part of our single arm push-up progression. Do it today!